The demand for front-end developers with knowledge about Angular is high because of the high scalability of the framework. Angular developers are highly skilled JavaScript developers with extensive knowledge of theoretical Angular software engineering. It's not too hard to become an Angular developer. It's just that Angular is a framework for large applications and with large applications, eventually you'll need abstraction and high level functions to manage all the JavaScript and performance. Hello everyone. Today, I, Pavita, on behalf of Edureka, will take you through this video on interview questions for Angular. So without further ado, let's look at the agenda for today. Firstly, we'll start with beginner's level interview questions in Angular. Next, we'll see intermediate level interview questions and then look at advanced level interview questions. Now let's get started. The first question in beginner's level interview question is what is Angular? Angular is a TypeScript based free and open source web application framework led by the Angular team at Google, a component based framework for building scalable web applications. It also integrates powerful features like declarative templates and end to end tooling dependency injections and various other best practices that smoothens the development path. Next, what is Angular mainly used for? Angular is typically used for the development of single page application. It provides a set of ready to use modules that simplify the development of single page applications. Not only this, with features like built in data streaming, type safety and a modular CLI, Angular is regarded as a full fledged web framework. Next, what is Angular CLI? Angular CLI is a command line tool that enables us to add various components, directives and services from the command line. Test cases and code can be added via the command line itself. Angular CLI is mandatory for creating Angular applications. Angular is a structural framework used to create dynamic web applications. It also uses modules from Node.js, whereas Angular uses HTML as your template language and lets you extend HTML syntax to define the application's components clearly and compactly. Write a pictorial diagram of Angular architecture. Now, this is most asked question when you go for an aptitude round. So make sure you practice this architectural diagram of Angular several times. The next thing is building blocks of Angular. Angular is built using components, modules, directives, decorators, pipes, data binding, templates, metadata, services, dependency injection. The next is what are templates in Angular? Templates in Angular are written with HTML that contains Angular specific elements and attributes. These templates are combined with information coming from the module and controller, which are further rendered to provide the dynamic view to the user. Next, what are the features of Angular 11? The updated features goes like faster builds, Internet explorers are updated. There is an improved logging and reporting. There is something called as automatic font inlining. Next, we have component test harness and then updated language service preview. The eighth question is what are the advantages of Angular? A few of the major advantages of Angular is that it supports two way data binding. It follows MVC model view controller pattern architecture. It supports static template and Angular template. You can add a custom directive. It also supports RESTful services. Validations are supported. Client and server communication is facilitated. Support of dependency injection has strong features like event handlers, animation, etc. Next, state some of the differences between Angular 10 and Angular 11. Angular 10 uses TypeScript 3.9, while Angular 11 has upgraded to TypeScript 4. Angular 10 uses enabled ES5 builds, but Angular 11 uses faster builds. Angular 10 has a default browser configuration, 
while Angular 11 upgraded to language service preview. Angular 10 converted pre-IV code and Angular 11 uses automatic inlining of fonts. TypeScript Lint version 6 is being used by Angular 10, but there is a migration to ESLint in Angular 11. The next, what is data binding? So basically, data binding is one of the most powerful and important features that allow you to define the communication between the component and document object model. It basically specifies the process of defining interactive applications without having to worry about pushing and pulling data between your view or template and even component. In Angular, there are four forms of data binding. String interpolation, property binding, event binding, two-way data binding. With that, we'll step into intermediate level interview questions. Firstly, we have explained the concept of scope hierarchy. So the scope object in Angular are organized into a hierarchy and are majorly used by views. It contains a root scope which can further contain scope known as child scopes. One root scope can contain more than one child scopes. Here, each has its own scope, thus the variables set by its view controller will remain hidden to other controllers. Now the scope hierarchy generally looks like root scope continued by other scope controllers until n number of controllers. The second, we have what are Angular modules. All the Angular applications are either modular or Angular, which means Angular applications follow a modularity system known as ng modules. Now these are the containers which hold a coercive block of code dedicated specifically to an application domain. A workflow or some closely related set of capabilities are also included. These modules generally contain components, service providers and other code files whose scope is defined by the containing ng module. With modules, the code becomes more maintainable, testable and readable. Also, all the dependencies of your applications are generally defined in modules only. The third question is, what is subscribing in Angular? In Angular, subscribe function is basically a method on the observable type. The observable type is a utility that asynchronously or synchronously streams data to a variety of components or services that have subscribed to the observable. Subscribe takes three methods as parameters, which has each as functions. First function is next. For each item being emitted by the observable perform this function. Error is the next function. If somewhere in the stream an error is found, do this method. Complete is the next thing. Once all the items are complete from the stream, do this method. The fourth question is, Describe different types of filters in Angular. Now the various filters supported by Angular are currency, which formats a number to an accurate currency format. Date, which formats a date to specific format. Filter, which selects a subset of items from an array. JSON, which formats an object to a JSON string. Limit, it limits an array or string into a specific number of elements or characters. Lowercase, it formats a string to lowercase. Number, it formats a number to a string. Order by, orders an array by an expression. Uppercase, it formats a string to uppercase. The next question is, what is dependency in Angular? Dependency injection is a software pattern where the objects are passed as dependencies rather than hard coding them within the component. The concept of dependency injection comes in handy when you are trying to separate the logic of object creation to that of its consumption. The config operation makes use of dependency injection that must be configured beforehand while the module gets loaded to retrieve the elements of the application. With this feature, a user can change dependencies 
as per his requirements. Next question, we have differentiation between one-way binding and two-way binding in Angular. In one-way binding, the view or the UI part does not update automatically whenever the data model changes. You need to manually write custom code in order to update it every time the view changes. Whereas in two-way data binding, the view or the user interface is updated implicitly as soon as the data model changes. It is a synchronization process unlike one-way data binding. Now, describing with diagram impresses the interviewer even better. What is transpiling in Angular? Transpiling in Angular refers to the process of conversion of the source code from one program language to another. In Angular, generally this conversion is done from TypeScript to JavaScript. It is implicit and it happens internally. The next question is, list some of the tools for testing Angular applications. Karma, Angular Mocks, Mocha, Browsify, Sion are some of the tools that is used for testing Angular applications. The next thing is, list the differences between JIT or just in time compilation and AOT, which is ahead of time compilation. In just in time compilation, the application compiles inside the browser during the runtime. Whereas in AOT, ahead of time compilation, the application compiles during the build time. Some of the differences as, as shown in the flowchart here. Have a look at it. The next question is how to create a service in Angular. In Angular, a service is a substitutable object that is wired together using dependency injection. A service is created by registering it in the module. It is going to be executed within the module. There are basically three ways in which you can create an Angular service. They are basically factory, service and provider. With that, we'll jump into the last part of today's session, which is advanced level interview questions. Here, the first question we have is, what do you understand by REST in Angular? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. REST is an API or application programming interface that acts as style that works on HTML request. In this, the requested URL pinpoints the data that needs to be processed. Further ahead, an HTTP method then identifies the specific operation that needs to be performed on the requested data. Thus, the APIs which follows the approach are known as RESTful APIs. Next question. In Angular, describe how you will set get and clear cookies. For using cookies in Angular, you need to include an Angular module called ng-cookies. They are angularcookies.js. For setting the cookies in a key value format, put is the method used. Next, to get cookies. For retrieving the cookies, get method is used. For removing cookies, remove method is used. Now, if you follow the code procedure shown here, you can proceed with it. Next question. Explain ng application or ng app directive in Angular. ng app directive is used to define Angular application, which let us use auto bootstrap in an Angular application. It represents the root element of an Angular application and is generally declared near HTML tag or body tag. Any number of ng app directives can be defined within an HTML document, but just a single Angular application can be officially bootstrapped implicitly. Rest of the application must be manually bootstrapped. Here is the code to follow the procedure. Next, what is the process of inserting an embedded view from a prepared temp ref or template reference? Now, template reference is a variable. Make sure you follow this code. It's most frequently asked in advanced level interviews. Next question, what is property binding and why is it important in Angular 11? In Angular, one of the ways to pass down values from a component 
to its template with a set value is through property binding. It is a great example of a one-way data binding technique used to transfer data. One of the great things about property binding is the control you get over your template elements from the component itself. Angular finds great ways to give developers full control of the tools they work with and this is a prime example of that. The developer can dedicate how data flows and gets updated with his own logic on any DOM element without restrictions. There are two bindings which is shown here. Property binding is one of them. Next, what are Angular Global APIs? Angular Global API is a combination of global JavaScript functions for performing various common tasks like comparing objects, iterating objects, converting objects. There are some common Angular Global API functions like Angular Lowercase, which converts a string to lowercase string, Angular Uppercase, which converts string to uppercase string, Angular E string, which returns true if the current reference is a string. Angular is number, which returns true if the current reference is a number. Next question is, what is eager and lazy loading? The feature modules can be loaded either eagerly or lazily or even preloaded when the application starts. Eager loading is basically when you have to load a feature module eagerly we need to import it into an application module using imports metadata of ng module decorator. Eager loading is useful in small size applications. In eager loading, all feature modules will be loaded before the application starts. Hence, the subsequent request to the application will be faster. While in lazy loading, to load a feature module lazily, we need to load it using load children property in root configuration that feature module must not be imported in the application module. Lazy loading is useful when the application size is growing. In lazy loading, feature modules will be loaded on demand and hence application start will be faster. Next question, what do you understand by constants in Angular? In Angular, constants are like the services which are used to define the global data. Constants are declared using the keyword constant. They are created using constant dependency and can be injected anywhere in controller or services. Next question, what is bootstrapping in Angular? Bootstrapping in Angular is nothing but initializing or starting the Angular application. Angular supports automatic and manual bootstrapping. When it comes to automatic, it is done by adding the ng app directive to the root of the application. Typically on the tag or tag if you want to add Angular Bootstrap in your application automatically. When Angular finds ng app directive, it loads the module associated with it and then compiles to DOM. Manual Bootstrapping Manual Bootstrapping provides you more control on how and when to initialize your Angular application. It is useful where you want to perform any other operation before Angular wakes up and compile the whole page. With that, let's look into the final question of today's session. How can you hide an HTML element with a button click in Angular? An HTML element can be easily hidden using the ng hide directive in conjunction along with the controller to hide an HTML element on button click. It's done as view and controller. View goes into the HTML file of your component while controller goes into the TypeScript file of your component. With that, we have come to the end of this session. I hope this video was useful and you came across all the interview questions that is frequently asked in the Angular interviews. I wish you all the best. Happy learning.